as land rainbow. rainbow inspiration for transformation transformation Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, this is a movement that's been going on for a couple of years now, as a matter of fact. And don't worry, we're innovative. We bend with the flow of time, which Devin's going to be talking about in his presentation today. And with the whole COVID thing now, we meet in ones and zeros in the digital domain. So it is so awesome to have you guys here. Welcome, welcome. I would like to introduce Devin, and he's going to be sharing with us on something that's I think about all the time, time. And the topic of his chat is, who's running the clock? The compression of time, a human invention. Devin, take it away, bruv. All right, uh, I've always wanted to know what that um, ones and zeros is, uh, behind, besides being in a Switchfoot song. Um, because whenever, 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 whenever it's introduced, Whenever it's introduced ones and zeros, like oh, I think of, um, I don't even know what song it is, but it just like goes in my head. Um, so yeah, one, one day, not this time, uh, we'll be able to explain what ones and zeros is probably to most people that don't have any idea what it is, such as myself. But I do did some research on something called the compression of time. I was uh, listening to a uh, Christian message and the, um, the, uh, the, the sermon was about Mark chapter six, about how Jesus walks on water. And then right after that, the, the disciples are either, they're either um, uh, amazed or they're afraid. And then all of a sudden, boom, they're on the shore of, of Galilee and just like that. So it's like the Bible's going real slow. And then all of a sudden, he's like there on the shore doing all sorts of miracles. And so he said compression of time. So I looked up, what is compression of time? I thought that was an interesting term. And I uh, was, was fascinated. I was stimulated. And I wanted to share with everybody basically two things, two revelations that I received and two kind of digs that I did in my heart. Uh, the first one has to do with um, uh, kind of the uh, geographical, uh, kind of a, um, societal uh, um, idea or perception of the compression of time. So if you look at like, say, globalization and how it's a, a, a more recent phenomenon about how the world is getting closer, we're feeling closer, more connected, even though the distance even though the globe may have remained the same distance, the same size, but yet we're getting closer together. How is that possible? It's because of the communications, because the transportation has gotten so much, so much faster. So really what's happening is with globalization is that the distance is remaining the same, but the time is getting smaller and smaller, giving us the feel that we're more connected, like say like the internet, say social media, um, you know, like, um, you know, mass communications, all that stuff. And then, and then you think you think of like uh, with this COVID, the COVID issue. Oh, is are we are we are we becoming are we becoming more separate as a society with the borders closing and the le no transportation? But yet, you know, with the internet and with the Zoom, we're actually getting closer. So it's not the globalization isn't isn't stopping this, but it's just might be slowing down. But actually, it's birthing another, uh, I, I guess, um, uh, a, another compression of time. And so what for, before I go on, I want to explain what is compression. It's, it's just the compression. It's getting smaller and smaller. The time is getting smaller, which makes the distance seem closer and closer. And so I was like, let me look at my notes for a second. So I was like, okay, if, if that's like a world phenomenon, if that's a perception that we have, why can't we use it in terms of like, like in this form? We, we talk about mental health. We talk about transformation. Why can't we use it with our, within our own mental health why 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 can't we instead instead of 
instead of making speeding up time, which is, which is, it, which is really hard with stress, with anxiety, never having enough time, wasting time. It's all, it's almost like for everybody, time is like our enemy. Uh, only very rarely do, do we get like where we have time, you know, where we actually, um, I, I, I think a term like redeem time, you know, make it better, make it, it's, it's hard. It's like, it's like, it's like, it is a race. Uh, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like the, we are losing almost. Um, that's what, that's what, I, I think everybody would have general consensus that, that we never have enough time, that we wish we had more time. But then we're talking about mental health. It could work the other way. For instance, uh, you could be, or I could be in a place of depression where we have nothing to do. Like really, I mean, we're just like, there's the time is like, is like it's, it's, we don't have, we have too much time and it, it gets in our head and it's, it's just kind of like the, you know, the, the devil, uh, is in the mind and the battlefield is there and your, your, your time is making you feel guilty. Time is made. It's just, it's just, so basically if you're, if you're, if you're successful, productive, you have no job, whatever time is of the essence, time is becoming uh, a challenge. And, and, and the whole, I think the globalization type phenomenon is actually having like a social construct, uh, maybe even uh, within our own biology of the brain for all the neurons that are firing as uh, if you're having like if you're really excited and the neurons are going really really fast but yet your brain is the same but yet you all of a sudden the, the time's over you don't you don't have enough time or, or it, it actually I was thinking it could work a little bit differently for instance like you know you do meditation you know you do the coping skills you know you do exercise and somehow some way the the, the brain is able to slow down is able to balance is able to create more margin, more better perspective. And I think, I think I found a way to uh, uh, show that. Uh, actually, I just developed it this morning. And uh, I was, I was um, um, reviewing last Aslan's, Aslan's meeting on September 5th. And um, let's see, you guys talked about the, the Maslow. Oh, oh, wait, I want I wanted to share with you. This is an amazing definition of the compression of time. And um, basically, it's, it, it talks about uh, the geography, okay? And it says that time is, um, I never liked the term space time. I never got it. I, I hated that term until I understood what compression of time is. Compression of time is right here. It says the space is time dependent, which means all distances are understood in terms of the time that it takes to traverse it. So that's the globalization phenomenon that I was talking about. It, the distance seems less because we're able to get there faster, transportation, communication, whatsoever. So remember that space is time dependent. So really, really time is like even determined space. So instead of it being space time phenomenon, I don't like that term anymore. I want it to be time space. I want people to see how important, how prevalent, how dominant time can be. Time space phenomenon. All right, and so basically what I wanted to do is if people feel closer, you know, why can't uh, we use that feeling, that perception to reverse time, to make up time, to buy back time. So to go, instead of it, time becoming faster and having less time, actually slowing down time. And, and there's a, a model that I, that, I, that I reviewed from the last meeting, well, the Maslow's, um, triangle where you have the, the different I have, I have got a picture here and i just did this this morning so okay look at you bro so you got you got the you got the maslow's triangle and the bottom is you know basic needs the other one is community and the top one uh like trend uh trend uh transcendence you know like enlightenment you know here's like the purpose of how to how to do it i don't like maslow's triangle okay i mean if you look at if you look at it like I think it needs to be inverse, dude. Nice you look, if, you look, if, you look, if you look like this, there's no hope. You're stuck, you know? You're down here and you're like, how am I gonna get up here? It's too much work. I better yeah. just stay down here, okay? Yeah. So, so then I created this thing, kind of like a volcano. So you got this like pipeline from the bottom <laughs> and um, I thought, I thought this, this would be a better model Saying, okay, at least gives hope. At least I can, you know, get up to the next level, you know, instead of just being stuck. But then, and you know, I can fulfill, I can fulfill my life, but you know, it's like, where's the, where's the direction on this one? How is this gonna, um, 
um, relate to the um, compression, uh, the time compression. So, so basically, what I what I did was I got this. Okay, here. There you go. Pretend you can't see the bottom. Okay. So what I did was I did this model that the pipeline instead of being through the middle, the pipeline was a, a another way, like a, a like a alternative view, an escape route. Okay. So here 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 is the pipeline, and what you want to do. Uh, in order to slow down time, you want to make more time. So you want to make this longer, okay? Well, you want to make more distance, which would give you more time in each level of the Maslow's thing. Okay, so so what you do is you increase the distance. Let's see if I can increase your distance by by adding another level. So if you added another level to Maslow, you would give yourself if it was the same paradigm, you would give yourself more distance here okay and you would spend more so you would spend more time in this level you can see right and it would give you more distance here and more distance here would give you more time uh coming up uh in in each wherever whichever level you're at and the reason why i didn't look like matt the reason why i did not like maslow's model was because you're doing you're trying to do enlightenment you're trying to do internal work you're trying i mean you know, a lot of our society seems to be wanting to be up here but then you're doing your internal work and you're like, what's the point? I'm like stuck. There's nowhere else to go. But if you, if you change your perception and you add it in their level, which is that internal work, which is those coping skills, which is all the things that we can do to, to make, you know, to, to, to cope better or to, uh, to deal with what, what we've got going on. Uh, but what I was talking about earlier, like meditation, like, you know, exercise, all that stuff. You, you put this here, and what that does, it gives you more time in each of these boxes. So the, the Maslow thing, I think this is not a good um, model now because you get to this point and you get stuck. But you, if you put it down here, your internal work, uh, you actually add uh, more distance to the paradigm, which gives you, uh, it'll stretch it more, um, more time because of the compression of time that they're together. Um, so, so that's basically um, where I wanted to go. So you got this, uh, this, this physical um, uh, perception that we have of uh, uh, time and how the compression of time and distance and how like, it's really simple. Like you, you go back a hundred years and uh, transportation was a lot slower. You can go as far, the world looked bigger. But what's happened now is the world is getting um, smaller and people have more anxiety. Uh, people have more you know, just this a negative aspect towards life. Even if you're productive, even if you're making money, I don't have enough money. You know, even if you're you're doing things well, you're still kind of on the clock. Um, and uh, it's interesting that that term on the clock, because if you look at um, uh, machines, right? If you look at machines, and machines are kind of running the clock right now. You know, like all the numbers everywhere. Uh, everywhere you, you look, there's, you know, the, the watches, the microwaves are all telling you what time it is. You know, it's almost like it's, it's almost as if they're communicating and no one's, no one's listening. And it's, it's, it's like we, we invented the clock. We, in, we invented this perception of time and we, 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 we talk about it. You know, it's, it's, it's the way we, the way we, 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 we know the series of events by, the, by talking about time and the the, the point is where, where I'm at about um, perhaps perhaps the um, perhaps the machines are in charge because they're not they're they're the ones that are that are compressing the time not us I think the machines are the I mean we invent we make inventions like the like the planes the internet and everything but what it does it kind of turns against us um, and even 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 the the invention of time, we we invented it, yet it's kind of turning against us. And so the solution, the hope in Maslow's to, to triangle, is is you're no longer stuck. You're no longer stuck here. Is you gotta you gotta develop yourself. You gotta do the internal work. You gotta dig deep. Say this is a volcano. You gotta dig deep, and you gotta you gotta you gotta pull these pull these skills out. And and what that does is. Uh, it creates more more distance, uh, which creates more time. And then when you when you when you when you're able to um, uh, create more time, you can actually make you can redeem it. You can you can make up for it. You can make up for lost time by having better moments. You know, by 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 really enjoying enjoying your 
your, your time. Um, and uh, it starts off with the inter- really it starts off with the, with the internal internal work. And I guess my, my point is uh, uh, by taking this reality of compression of time, you know, globalization uh, is the best example, uh, and putting it in the internal where where your world is like a pyramid or a triangle, and what you can do is uh, you can um, you can make you can make you can reverse the curse. Uh, by 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 doing that um, internal work and looking at Maslow's triangle a little bit differently, instead of being stuck on the top, you can redevelop yourself and um, work work from the bottom, and then you'll you'll you will buy more time. Thanks. Dude, that there was so many. Wow, layers that was to that. awesome! Oh my yeah. gosh, that's so amazing. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, totally, dude. That was so cool. It's so great to hear that. Um, Jeez, Devin, that, that's just what I needed to hear right now. It's like, that is so awesome. Perfect timing, like, wow. Yeah, because, you know, it's all about living in the now, right? And experiencing right now is what life's all about, the moment. So if you can make that moment last longer by adjusting your time. So would you say, like, more meditation and more... How how more can you um make that go slower? Yes, dude. Well, it's the, it's the it's the internal work. It's it's whatever whatever you can do. Is the par it's the paradox is you spend you spend more time doing like you know the internal stuff like meditation, you know, reading. All of a sudden, somehow you get more time. There's there's a paradox where you just you're you're going into the next bar, the next graph, and and um, it's it's expanding. It's expanding your triangle. It's expanding your 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 schedule, your universe. Yeah. So like in a way doing like more stuff, but internally, uh, not externally. Yeah. You get more time externally. Yeah. Yeah. That's like so- think about if it's a dream, like you're busy running around in a dream, like it's mayhem. Like, dude, I've had this dream so many times. I like find gold coins or I find money lying around and I spend the whole dream running around trying to collect as much as I can. And then I wake up and it, it's all gone. So mm-hmm. we can be, we can busy ourselves with these so-called external pursuits, but the whole thing's really happening inside you anyway. So if we change the whole construct of the dream, of the consciousness, of the internal work, it changes the dream itself. And then hopefully it'll give both the time and the money back, which I do think there's a providence that comes when you align the inner world with the outer world. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. That was, that was, that was great to hear, Devin. Wow, so yeah, cool to hear, man. Yeah, and Maslow's hierarchy. I've thought the same thing. It's like, um, I think a lot of people just stay on the bottom because there isn't that motivating force that pulls them to the top. Um, you know, so Maslow's hierarchy is called self-actualization, but really he had a level above that self-transcendence. And so in psychology, generally it's taught that you climb the different ladders. Once you've got your basic needs met, then you get the next level of more increasing complexity. But I don't think that's really enough to motivate people. I don't think that people um, are intrigued by that. I think human nature is that we can see the future and that's what pulls us in. So in theology, and you touched on some theological themes there, and I know you've got a whole spiritual model about how this works too, and you said redeeming time. I love that. Um, So in theology, there's the idea called prolepsis, which is that it's not the past that pushes the present forward, but it's the future that pulls the present into itself. And when Jesus incarnated here, it was the future breaking into the present. And so it was a, a dose of what's coming for all of us, the next level of humanity breaking into the present and then pulling the present into that future kind of eschatology. So I, I think if we flipped Maslow's hierarchy and first we give people the, the deep meaning and purpose, that's what could motivate the more basic needs. That's why you wake up and you, you do your, your eating and your showering and that kind of stuff because there's something that you're excited about, this deep purpose. So I agree with you, man. Um, I think Maslow was onto something, but I think we can reinvent that. Yeah. Good to have you here, Ennis. So if you guys, um, so for the people watching on Facebook, there's other people here, but if their camera is off, then it doesn't show up on Facebook, but um, there's a crew of us. And so for the people who are on the Zoom, if your camera's off, then it doesn't look like you're at the meeting on Facebook, which is all good. 
Um, and who, for those watching, that's so cool that you're here. And it's so cool that we're able to talk about the nature of reality and the reality of nature, because they're actually the two sides of the same coin. Cool. What other thoughts did you guys have about time and about the things that Devin said? Sergey, you always have something good to say. Uh, yeah, well, uh, hi, I guess. Hi, everybody. Um, first, unfortunately, I don't have a, a whole ton of time today because there is a, an important <laughs> protest going on in front of the Apple store today. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I can tell, talk about this later. Um, but regarding the time, I uh, like to think about some um, kind of colloquial expressions that we sometimes say, like something maybe even coming from a long time ago, like folk wisdom and stuff like that. And there are like expression like time flies. Um, so there are times when when the time goes really fast. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I think that the, the whole kind of, um, which is not, in disagreement with what uh, what was Devin was saying, but it's uh, uh, it's it's it's, um, it's a subjective kind of a perception how long uh, the time goes, right? So uh, I think that we really are cognizant about the duration of time when when we have an opportunity to kind of a. Uh, step out from the the flow of uh of thought um and then and then we can see okay well that 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 like took no time or that that was taking a long time but i think whilst you are in the middle of it like imagine if you're watching a movie and you're very much into it you you don't even notice how the time goes right so um or it's like you can imagine that you are just sitting somewhere and like completely bored and uh, you're like, keep noticing, okay, well, I'm just sitting here. Like you yeah. keep, keep, keep stepping out from that process of, of sitting. You're like, oh, I'm still sitting here. That's kind of boring. And that's like, you're doing it repeatedly. And then that, that creates um, an illusion uh, that, that the time now is, is taking a long time to, to, to get through the sitting process because you keep like observing yourself sitting. Um, and, and so I think that like we can, uh, um, we can work on this and, and we can make time that of the things that, that we like to enjoy to, to last longer by just being aware of it aware that something good is is happening to us and and like keep sort of like noticing ourselves at it at this at this good good moment which um which then will maybe help you or or just anyone so to, I, to, to sort of enjoy it inject that to live in the now um we we work so much on autopilot that we don't realize yeah. We're, and that's when it flies really fast. I agree. Yeah, we're we're in a constant hypnotic phase. We're we're hypnotized all the time, um, and so to be aware of what you are doing in the right right now in the now, is like, where if you're driving or when you leave your house, you like, did I lock the front door? Did mm -hmm. I actually do that? So like, if you if you do something like say some weird weird s word when you're locking the front door, that snaps you into right now. So that you remember mm. it. So it's like, oh, you pay attention. Mm. Like when you're driving, mm. you arrive at your place, you go, gee, how many lights did I go through? You know, we're, in, we're an automatic pilot. So that's yeah. not living in the now. That's like, that's right. Time. I completely so you agree. want to be in the yeah. now, yeah. And, um, you know, so you want to do a lot of things that get you right in the moment. And then that brings your attention to the fact that you're like, am I doing something I like right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want to be doing something positive, something that you enjoy all the time. Like I'll do it. If I ever have a job and I don't like that job, I'll be like, you know what? I'm leaving by the customer's mm -hmm. like, well, what? I'm like, yeah, I, I'm, I don't want to be here. My time is valuable. <laughs> and I'll just leave. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I like that attitude, yeah. I want to enjoy every moment, every second, you know, and I'm no longer going to, it's, it's, I guess it comes with age. I'm not, I'm not going to sit around if I'm not having a good time or I'm not in, the time that I yeah. want to be in. Also, yeah. when we get, old, oh, yeah. we get older, you know, we kind of lose time. <laughs> That's when you realize, oh man, we wasted so much time. <laughs> so, so yeah, I agree with this. And just to say, like, to to the to the presentation, 
that I think it is um, absolutely um, trainable, like through through meditation and and just kind of thinking about it, like just been um, recognizing that the perception of time is a subject subjective thing, and that as as we were saying, like if you're engrossed in something, just a just a passenger on the thought, uh, then then you you sort of um, the time will fly very fast because you don't actually perceive it in that moment. But then when like if you have opportunity to be aware of what's going on, that's when you can can feel it, I think. Yeah, I just actually initiated a screen share. Check this out. This is um, Einstein explaining his theory of relativity. He says, when you're courting a nice girl, an hour seems like a second. Mm -hmm. When you sit on a red hot cinder, a second seems like an hour. That's relativity. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So I like what Devin was saying is that um, time is just a measure of distance and everything's kind of coming closer together because of our interconnected world with the internet and stuff. Now, I also think that maybe our neurons are getting more connected than they ever were, which makes it seem like time is speeding up. Maybe we're moving faster and faster towards our destiny. What the singularity, um, Elon, uh, not Elon Musk, but Terence McKenna, um, and they both talk about the singularity, but Terence McKenna says that time is like, um, you know, those things in the malls where you drop a coin in and it circles around and around. And goes blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, he says that's what time is like. And it moves faster and faster as it gets pulled towards the singularity. Um, and yeah. so maybe with the interconnection of our neurons right now, th there's, look at all these neurons that are connecting through our computer screens. Yeah. That's so much information that's happening quicker and quicker. It's these connectivities and maybe we're getting faster and faster towards some sort of endpoint. Yeah. But what's interesting thing about the relativity though, is that I think if you are an observer, uh, sorry, if you are, if you are, uh, staying within your own coordinate system, you are not actually perceiving any real change in, um, in, in time or in, in, in distance. It's, it's when you start comparing two observers, then you can be, okay, well, the time actually flies faster for that one of the two from, 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 from the kind of third, uh, third point of view. Like we, uh, you've seen the movie Interstellar, right? Uh, so, so yeah. there, there was a really striking scene when um, uh, the the uh, space explorers uh, go down, uh, so land on a planet that is near the black hole, and for them, um, the because of the the, the you're kind of closer to the singularity and, and all. So, so their time runs, um, well, actually there was the other way around. So it was uh, like they spent seven minutes on the planet and for the guy who stayed on the, uh, on the spaceship uh, in orbit, so he didn't go down for him, like, I don't know, 30 years passed or something. So, so actually, um, but, yeah, and also when things are falling into the black hole, you know, like they get redder and dima. They're like you, as as if you're watching somebody fall fall down into the black hole, we'll actually never see them cross the event horizon. So there is no events beyond the event horizon for us. So that's the last event that we'll like ever see. They'll be approaching it in, indefinitely. So so I need to think a little bit how how that analogy of singularity with a with the sink and speeding up of time seemingly near there really connects to the to what we see from the general relativity point of view maybe i don't, I don't know if those oh, are... i've got no idea what what is going on <laughs> neither do i did none of us know what <laughs> reality is somehow vietnam has joined us welcome landon What's up? What's up? What's good with it, bro? Can you just I explain know, what on earth is going on, dude? Just, just you know, in a little nutshell, what on earth is this? <laughs> well, I know he's talking about Einstein theory of relativity related to that movie. Uh, what is it called? I watched Interstellar. It. Interstellar. Yeah, Interstellar. Yeah. I never. So really, the, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I didn't like that movie, but I will say that I didn't quite understand it. Maybe that's why I didn't like it. 
Well, there, so the moment there is that, so imagine somebody is, is, uh, is in the orbit uh, around Earth, right? So like International Space Station. And then like uh, two people or three people like land onto the Earth. Uh, yeah. But the Earth in this movie happens to be like close to the black hole, basically. Mm. So, so they go down to the Earth or that planet, spend like seven minutes there. Okay, this planet is not good. We don't want to leave here. They didn't like it. So they fly back up to the, to the mothership in orbit. And for the person who stayed in the, on the mothership, 30 years passed. He was waiting for them for a very long time. And that is how it works. That's how the physics of time work is that if time works different on different planets and different gravity spheres and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if, yeah, we could actually learn to somehow send ourselves into the future or maybe even into the past. Yeah. Josh, could I raise uh, my, excuse me, do we have our hand raising? Do you have a feature on our Zoom meeting where we can actually raise our hand? Uh, yes, <laughs> I, I have got a feature on our Zoom meeting where we can raise a hand. And so if you click um, the more under participants, there's a little hand waving. Bam, I did it right there. We can also see you if you've got your video and you can raise your hand um, and chat. But we'd love to hear from you right now, buddy. What's up? But I mean, I'm, I'm on participants, seven participants in our Zoom meeting today, right? You said, where was that next, Mel? By participants? That's all I can see. And then there's three little dots that you can click at the oh, bottom of what this raise hand. Hand. Got it, got it. Uh, Oh, Buddy has raised his hand. You yes, see buddy, me raise you, my hand? You got something you want to say? I'm going to lower your hand for you. I can sure. control you from a distance. That's powerful. I, well, Devin, Devin's muted. Can you unmute me, Devin? There. Oh, good, good, good. I wanted to interject on your comment about time and it's, you know, how uh, time is relative. If we, you know, it seems like before you know it, the day's gone. Before you know it, a month's gone and everything yeah. here. That's uh, true. And I want to interject on that point. I think depends on what's going on in your life. I think the circumstances of your life, I think, dictate, pretty much dictate if time's going by fast or it's going by slowly. And I'm going to put a case in point here. I'm going to just to, for you to think about food for thought here. Person who's working every day, who punches a time card. Think of that person. Nine to five. They're nine to five. Very, very repetitive. Very, and I'm going to take a, a page out of uh, Anthony Burgess's book, Clockwork Orange. If you're a clockwork orange, it means you're punching a time card. Everything's the same pretty much every day, Right. Well, that time's going to be different with that person, right? Time's going to go by very fast, I think, you know, especially if they enjoy what they're doing. If they enjoy punching a time card, if they enjoy a nine to five, if they enjoy uh, whatever they're doing every day, you know. But uh, to um, Chris's point, or Sir, I might have been Sergey brought that up, if you don't really enjoy what you're doing, I think it's going to go by a lot slower than if you did. You know, another, here's some more food for thought. A person, I don't know if you've known anybody who's been incarcerated, but I've heard, I've watched shows where people are being interviewed while, uh, while they're incarcerated. And they're, they're like, time goes by very slow in prison. You'd be shocked. It goes by outside, in the outside world, it goes fast. A day goes fast. A week goes fast. A month goes fast. If you're in prison, it's slow as molasses for some reason. Mm. And I'm like, and I, you know, knock on wood, I've never been incarcerated. I hope I never find out what time like that is. Um, but it's, 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 time is relative to the circumstances you're in, in your, in your respective life. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I want to, yeah. want to comment on that. Let me say. Well, like, like Einstein said, right. If you're sitting on the hot stove, like it will feel like ages. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I was arrested for the, the cops thought that I was on drugs when I was actually having a manic episode. And so I spent only one day and one night in jail, but it was so long. I'm wondering whether, because there's no stimuli, right? It's just complete. Uh, so I wonder whether time is a reflection of the connections that we make or the interest that we have. And if there's nothing to intrigue yeah. our interest, I remember sitting well, in school, boring lessons would take so long. So maybe it's a, a reflection of the connections or interest that exactly. we have. I think it's related to the speed with which we can get the information. So, so ultimate speed with which information transmits is the speed of light. And 
for the if you're moving with the speed of light the time doesn't flow for you any like the, there is no time like what the photon uh particle of light it it moves with the speed of light so that's the the final speed of the maximum speed with which information spreads for the photon there is no time it's like it crosses the entire universe and and for for in its coordinate system it's not even a second ticked it it covers the entire entire universe in in no time no time passes for the photon uh, since the big bang and now it just um it, there, it, it just doesn't perceive this time. And so maybe as we're getting more and more information, like through our devices and Facebook and, and, and all of that, then um, uh, we're we are ultimately able to cover a big distance faster, like like the photon. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I was going to say, I was going to say, like, kind of a review of like what I said, what everybody said. I, re I learned in my psychology class, there is a place in our brain, I don't know which area of it that is, that does um, um, control, not that knows what time it is. There, we have a biological location that's able to, you know, get the synapses and get the neurons and actually get a gauge of what time it is. Like we, we've grown that in our brain. But like, what if it, as it is outside, what is inside? Like it's, it's, it's uh, parallel, like what's going on around the world and the connections and the, tra uh, the communications, the internet. What if inside our brain, the, bi the, actually, the, the actual brain biology, you know, just look at all the, the neurons and everything firing and all the connections and all the, all the places. It's almost like what's going on outside and what's going on inside, they're, they're, they're parallel. They're, they're, they're like, they're, they're together. So what, what we can learn from like say globalization, what's happening, that could be what's also happening inside our own, like, 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 like mm -hmm. physical, I'm talking about the, 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 the gush of the actual tissues and everything like it is uh, the, the compression of time is happening. Um, and and what, what we can learn from that, I mean, doing meditation and, and slowing our, our system down, uh, that could slow down all the synapses, all the, all the fire, and just slow it down, just slow it down. And then, or doing stuff to really, to rebalance it out, to re, re, rebalance our, 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 the actual biology, physical biology of our brain, focusing on that. And that, that le left alone, like, uh, well, environmental, uh, you're in a, a um, it, it changes on the situation. Like you can have a manic experience time go, go by so fast. You don't even, you know, doing marijuana and doing drugs or you don't even re realize it's been three days. You don't remember, or you're in like a really, really lonely, boring environment where you're not getting any stimulation, nothing. And that little place in our brains, like, okay, you know, like, you know, ticking, you know? So I, I think uh, that would be a, a good way to look at it as just the physical brain biology and learning about ourselves, our brains, how to treat them better by watching what's happening in the geographical uh, sense of the earth. And an example would be this compression of time. It's an example. Wow. Yeah, the inner is a reflection of the outer. And as the world is getting more connected, probably our neurons are getting more connected too. That's, that's really interesting. Um, so this time discussion is absolutely fascinating and I think it's really relevant to us in this time. And I also want to make room for other topics that people want to bring to the table. So I'm moving yeah. into a structured group chat. I'm wondering if anyone has any topics that I'll quickly write down that they'd like us to explore together as a group. Yes. Um, oh, yes. land on. Okay. What, what you got for us, man? Right, what are you, so I, I so just give a little 20 second introduction and then we'll see how many topics there are and then we'll take it in turns to go by them. For sure. Um, so I'm gonna throw out the first topic. First topic is uh, uh, chips in your brain and how technology is going to advance in the next 20 years and how uh, we're going to have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in our brain and how we're going to be able to basically put our phones in our brain without needing actual phones and how that's either going to fuck up society or make it better. <laughs> Elon Musk's Neuralink. Oh, yeah, bro. We were talking about that last time. Thanks, man. That's a fascinating topic. Cool. So we got one from Landon. What about the rest of you guys? Do you have any topics you'd like to bring up? Uh, I'm going to have to check out like pretty soon. So I'll just uh, participate in, in whatever topics uh, other other participants bring up. So I, I think I'll just, uh, yeah, be, be like participate, but not propose my own topic today. Sure. Yeah. Sergey, I think is going to be involved in something happening out outside UTC yeah. in La Jolla about yeah. Belarus. And I, and I can I can comment on that if 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 if, if you like. Can so, you yeah. Please, 
when you yeah. come back um so let's let's make that your quick topic and we'll come to that first before yeah. the the microchip thing and then buddy okay. do you have a topic that you'd like to bring up today um i may uh I was just, I want to run wild with time topic. I love that, that I subject. Love it, I absolutely love that subject. Yeah, Especially because being a historian, Joshua, I'm always reflecting on time. I'm always reflecting on a, a period of time. You know, even if it's 100 years ago, well, I wasn't around, but uh, I studied 100 years ago, I studied 200 years ago, I studied 1,000 years ago, I studied 20 years ago. So uh, I, 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 if we can span on that whole topic, I'd love it. Cool. Awesome. Let's do that. And then Brie is popping in and out like a quantum particle. So when she <laughs> pops back in, then we'll ask her if she's got a topic. Um, so th that's, that's beautiful, guys. We've got three to go to. Let's go with you, Sergey, about what's going okay, on. Okay. Well, maybe I can like then, first of all, show you guys the board that we made with my wife yesterday. Uh -huh. So Sergey is from Belarus, which is in Europe, and they're having political things where there's a revolution. Uh, you see if you can read. Okay. Yeah. So, do you guys see it? Yeah, we can. So, it's in in Belarus. Uh, elections, uh, fraudulent elections, happened in in um, in August, and um, a lot of people uh, are unhappy and started protesting. Um, but there was unprecedented wave of police brutality, um, especially in the beginning. There were like mass beatings, like just many policemen beaten one person. The the press is expelled. There is no no freedom of journalism, no 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 freedom of speech. All of this is uh, everything that is happening is basically it's hard to find information about about it. But, you know, there are people protesting and there are people who are not afraid, like this man in my hometown, an old frail man standing up against this, um, a policeman protected with, uh, with his gear and, 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 and baton. And then there are many people who, who suffered injuries. This person was shot um, uh, to death uh, in this moment. Oh, wow. So um, the, one of the few ways how this was, um, oh, and, and right now there is no, like, the judicial system is uh, completely corrupt. Like, people who are, um, um, who did this violence, there are uh, uh, over a thousand uh, applications for, uh, like, a, a criminal case, but not a single criminal case was uh, started, not a single one. There's not a single policeman who is uh, currently um, tried for, excess force, uh, even though they, they actually killed people like we see on those pictures. And um, Telegram is one of those chat, like a, it's like a, it's a messenger app that um, is very hard to block. It's Russia cannot block it and Belarus cannot block it. And, um, and because there is no justice, what people are doing, they are revealing identities of, of these people and, and just put them out online who are these people are from the police, but also besides police, also people who are involved in propaganda of the regime or just in the regime itself. And it's a, it's a, it's a controversial topic because some of those, like th there is no like judicial system is broken. So some people take justice in their head, hands and they, there are cases when, when some of the houses of these people who are, were exposed as being policemen, were set on fire, their cars were vandalized. And, and now Apple reached the decision that these channels have to be censored. And it's not, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be allowed to just release information about people online, even though, you know, they, they could, could have been this, this policeman or, or people who are maintaining this regime. And, and this, I think, takes away the last, kind of one of the last ways how people in Belarus can try to do something. Um, it's their kind of, um, first of all, we know about all of this because of Telegram and because there is no judicial system. It's an imperfect, it's not black and white, as I'm saying, but it's one of the things that people do, can do, they can tell and reveal the identity of the people who are who are doing this 
And if we don't know who these people are, we will, they will never have justice. They will never be um, tried and prosecuted for what, what they've done. And so I believe this is important to, to, to go and, and show and be in front of the Apple store today and, and have this in front of the people who are coming to, to buy Apple products today. Wow. True. Powerful. Good for you, man. I think, just, uh, yeah, there is a censorship and there's a control of ideas and information. And yeah. uh, like you say, if there's a few channels that still can allow people to be informed mm -hmm. about what's going on, uh, I think that's awesome. I wouldn't be surprised if there's media coverage of you guys outside the Apple store. And so maybe people yeah. will be seeing your billboard both on Facebook here and on <laughs> yeah. TV. I'll post the, yeah. Thank you for, for this opportunity to, to talk, talk about this. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, um, um, and, and, and what's also hypocritical is that uh, I checked uh, and there are channels like this that, that reveal identities of people who are told to be in Antifa but those are people who some of them are just Bernie supporters or people who participate in Black Lives Matter. You can find these channels today on Telegram with names and, and those channels are not censored as far as I understand. But, but channels in Belarus are censored and you can, you can start wondering why, why this is. is. Is the Belarusian government talking to Apple and threatening them with stop and se selling their devices or something like that why um i so that 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 is another factor that's a little bit um you know infuriating that it's also like even what they're doing it's a private con corporation but i i see that there is a bias in how they apply their their judgment and we we don't have anything to say uh we like to to apple like we we, we can't just like suggest them to to like who like vote or 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 they don't listen to us users they they make this decision they're very powerful now but they yeah. they make these decisions for all of us and decides what what is censored and what is not and and i i think this is a very dangerous situation what has apple decided are, are they what are you saying they're getting rid of telegram or no no so um i think they have a power to block individual channels so, so, so I think that's what is happening that they, that they will block the channels that they, that reveal identities of people, of the individual people who are, who are working in police and in, in, in Belarusian propaganda. So, but right now they told uh, Durov, who is the person who is the CEO of Telegram, they, they told him to, to shut those channels down, but I don't think he, he will do it himself, but nevertheless, I think Apple, uh, we'll be able to do it to shut those channels down on their platforms. Yeah, I can kind of see both sides though. Like if the channels are exposing people who work for the police and then their houses are getting burned down, um, then I can yeah. understand why that's a danger. And I also see how, but we also do need to expose the corruption and propaganda that's going yeah, on. Yeah, it's, 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 it's sword. not black and white. Uh, yeah, it's Life is not, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think there should be some kind of dialogue about it and we should be able to to say stuff to to apple as as users of apple yeah. platform what what we want to be and and right now they just you know doing this the way they, they think this this is done and and right now yeah. it's in um disadvantages many people in in their opinion and in in belarus and probably other places too yeah absolutely do you guys have any thoughts about that we call it apple don't buy their shit yeah, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, yeah I, they got so many the, people who do. Yeah, it's the thing is, it's I think it's also important to to protest because, uh, because important to protest because if if Apple will do it, I'm I'm afraid that Google will do it next. Uh, yeah. if they'll see that okay, well, Apple, this is how Apple is handling this. Maybe they'll take it as an example, and then this will be maybe banned on Android platform too. So I, um, I think like. I just want to, them to know that, that there's a lot of people who are uh, uh, unhappy with, that, with this and, and, and appeal to them to, to, to talk to us and listen let's to Let's say to that this happens. Voice. Hypothetically speaking, let's say Telegram gets banned. Let's say like whatever, like uh, Vibri gets banned. These are all like 
communication yeah. apps, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't matter because it'll just be replaced in the market. You understand? I mean, at, at the end of the day, if you take away Telegram, give it two weeks, someone else is going to release something similar to it. There's too many people who want to be anonymous. There's too many. The market is too big to shut mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Well, so, that's that's a that's that's a hope. I agree with you. Uh, so that if they shut this down, hopefully there's another thing will pop up. The the fight will go on. So so yeah, I don't think it will be the end of the world if the if the Telegram will shut down. It will it will be a setback because this this was this was the major platform and it still is the major platform that is that's really hard for 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 Russian government for Belarus to shut down. For some reason, they always manage to to find a way to communicate like to still continue working on people's phones. A lot of people but, trust Telegram. A lot mm -hmm. of people, for real. Yeah. And buddy, I see you got your hand up. What are your thoughts? Yeah, forgive my ignorance. What's Apple, how does Apple as a company relate to any of the, the these events? I'm, there's a disconnect, if you could just enlighten me here. Well, what what we know, like uh, one, uh, what I read in the news, and also what is in a personal Telegram channel of the CEO of Telegram, and uh, he is describing that uh, uh, Apple told them to shut down three channels, and he listed those channels, which immediately boosted their popularity, which is also interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I joined all three right away. So. Um, so he, he told them, they told him to shut those down. And he said that um, uh, he <coughs> understands this is not black and white situation, but he would rather have those channels open. That's what, what he wrote in his own personal telegram. But he says that Apple, in the next paragraph, that Apple, uh, what usually happens for him, he says apps like telegram, that's how he phrased it, that Apple will shut them down like themselves. So, so I, as I as I understood from from this, that the power pa Apple has some kind of a um, power control to be able to shut down individual channels if they if they want to. So, oh. I, uh, yeah, it's not the whole app; it's just some of the channels in in the in this messaging service. It's like Facebook group. Imagine like Facebook would say, "Okay, this group has to go down because." information day is dangerous you know some people get hurt but those know, people yeah. are people who are part of this regime who hurt other people and we can't get justice so that's that's why why the situation is so complex yeah i mean you can only censor me so much for so long or you know what i'm saying check the, let's say they remove telegram let's say yeah I mean, I mean, let, let's get down to the nitty-gritty of what this is okay this is uh co corporations and governments attempting to get closer to banning encryptions. That's the truth. They don't just want to mm -hmm. ban channels. They want mm -hmm. to end encryptions. That's really where this is going, honestly, if you look at the ultimate of what they want. They don't want information to be able to be encrypted. They want only government to have access to encryptions, such as communication, uh, yeah. uh, like EVP, pretty good protection, using that. They don't want us to even be allowed to use that because if we're allowed to use that, this is, the, this is what they don't want. They don't want people to be able to communicate without them being able to have a backdoor into it. Yeah. Okay. That's, their, yeah. that's their worst fear. Yeah, it's, it might be. Okay. Yeah, it, I think it's a, it's a very reasonable kind of thought. It, maybe that's why it's going. Well, I mean, so just look at the laws that they're trying to implement. I mean, it's not, hard, it's not hard to see that what they're trying to do. They make it pretty fucking obvious. And it's really ridiculous. It really gets ridiculous because this breaks down into many different rights on many different levels. There's already laws that protect our right to privacy. So it, it, it goes beyond. It goes beyond, dude. It's, it's so crazy because think about it. They've already broken these laws. And what have we done about it? We've done nothing. No one's in jail. No one gives a mm -hmm. shit. We just ignore it. Well, but, you know, but th those things are the common goal and 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 unfortunately like you know when trump was elected the way all of this march for science there were all of these people protesting a whole ton around the world actually but then it sort of waned away and then people right. like, fell back to not like true true i remember that yeah it was there was a wave and i mean i yeah i wasn't participating back then i will participate again if there is a need but but yeah there was a prize and then it sort of 
just it like went back to normal. Yeah, well, good for you for doing doing it today, man. And please keep us in the loop about how all that yeah. goes and stuff. I think Thank the world is in our hands. So yeah. thanks for sharing that. Man. For yeah. being here. Is it cool if we move on to Landon's topic about chips in the brain? No yeah. shit, man. I forgot about that. Totally. Take it away, Landon. Well, it's up to All you, right. man. All right, so check this out. Mm. <laughs> so look, man. Look, they're trying to say that in 20 years. All right, let me just put it to you like this. People right now in this day and age, in 2020, I'd say about half of people wouldn't get a, the, of the vaccine for COVID, right? Due to due to mostly logical paranoia. I mean, mm-hmm. if you just look around at what's gone on, the crazy shit as far as yeah. the government spying on people illegally, showing they don't give a fuck about your rights. Yeah. Can, can I, sorry, sorry to, to interrupt. Can I, there's one really, we have a really case in case. That, so my wife and I, we're scientists, we're completely pro-vaccines. But my wife asked doctor to give information about vaccines that was given to our child. They like flipped out. They we had to complain she had to write a complaint only to get this package insert about what was actually in the vaccine that was administered to us without this without the actual fight against kaiser we couldn't get this information about what was in the vaccine that they gave us we are completely pro vaccine i know i know how the immune system works i know that the vaccines vaccines work wow but if you don't tell people what you're doing if you're hoarding this information I can completely understand why many people have mistrust and, and, and are scared about this. What, what, what just Landon just said, it's very logical. But the yeah. fact that, that that information <clears throat> was not more available to you easily, yeah. it's just ridiculous. It's yeah, absolutely, absolutely awesome. So I, I think when it really, what it really breaks down to is about, about half of the people wouldn't get it. Probably around half of people would be like, fuck that, not going to get that. But – I do, I do think um, that people are a little bit more stupid when it comes to putting things in their brain, thinking that it's going to make them more fancy. <laughs> um, so I think that probably uh, around half the people or a little more than half would be stupid enough to fall for this, especially when you see uh, other groups of people becoming more productive. So it's, it's, one, thing, it's one thing to, um, to simply you know, be able to buy this. But once this actually gives a clear advantage to, to humans, to other people, and let's say, you're, let's say you're an architect, okay? You build fucking buildings, all right? And you're, you're with a team, and you're building a fucking building together. And across the table from you are these people who are not even talking and simply writing and drawing out plans right there and then. They, they're more productive, they're getting more shit done. They're making more money. Long story short, where, here's where I'm going with this. I think what's really going to fuck us over is, and what's going to make it hop, as in the, the other 40% of people are going to do it, is because they're going to realize that it's like we're still capitalists, dude. You either keep up with society or society leaves you fucking behind. I don't know. What's your guys' thoughts on that? For instance, I mean, this is in America. This is in Sergey's place. I was thinking about the Apple store and, you know, you got the government, you know, pushing them to go one way and you got the people's, the people like say they are protesting. They don't, they don't really aren't going to push Apple to go the other way. The people that are protesting are trying to push the people to go from Apple. And so basically like the, the capitalists, like the Apple is going to be going towards the government no matter what. It's just that the people that want their Apple, are they going to, want the apple more than than yeah. what's going on in society and really that's that's where you're, you're going yeah. again uh like a double you know a government mm. and apple and they're not yeah. gonna move. that's like the, but what, what what can move is the people but like, like it's the, the capitalist spirit you know the materialist spirit i mean they, like what what are they where are they looking at are they is their perspective at the apple product or is their perspective at people getting you know the yeah. injustice Absolutely. probably i agree Probably some. I mean, even if it was half half, even if it was half, um, the Apple would be is going to try to get more money. So it, it's yeah, it's this system. It, um, so yeah, just yeah. put that out there, like kind of blending the two. But so that I just want to give you that perspective. Uh, Thank you. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to make a like a comment uh, to to this uh, to this topic, and then I'm going to have to sign sign out. Sorry, sorry about this. Uh, have to go uh, not to miss the the time there. 
Um, so both, I think what, um, what Devin is saying and what London was saying. So uh, that's what I'm thinking too. Like if we, if perception of the value is that the success, that's what we want to make more money, to make more stuff, to, to be more productive in terms of like how much GDP, how much revenue we can generate. If we have this metric, then we're going to be chasing it and running and maybe even forget about the justice, whatever. Like we need that apple, we need to be more productive, we need to that cheap. But hopefully what coronavirus and, and, and us talking here, what we're doing by slowing things down is that we're understanding that maybe the real value is not how much stuff we, we have, but are we able to be in harmony and in peace with ourselves, with people and with the environment. And if this will become the value of what we want to be, what we want to achieve, then we won't be chasing those brain implants. We won't be chasing the Apple phones. We will choose something maybe less technologically advanced, but something that maybe will, um, will bring the, the, you know, the values that, that we want, the, the harmony, the, the peace and, and uh, sustainable environment. Yeah. I don't know if this change will happen. That's well, true. It's, it's about being, being, being content, but also knowing your role. Like, uh, Sergey, yeah. you, I think you've got a purpose. You've got a job to do. Uh, you, you might be you know, content with life, but you can't just stay home and be comfortable. With no, that. no. I want, to, to, I want to educate or tell people what, what I know and, and, and show them the facts so that they can't ignore them. So I, I agree. Like, if you want the change, if you want this society to be, well, make the society how you want it to be. You're also the society. Nice. I agree. Not, not sit around. You did it here with us, sir. I appreciate it. You yeah. educated well, th me well, thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Josh, again. I, I got to check awesome, out. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Best of luck today, man. Thanks thank for being you. here. Until the next time. Bye-bye. So, Landon, yeah, man, I think that's really important. And I really do think that's the way that things are going. Um, did, so you watched Elon Musk's Neuralink presentation, did you? Well, <clears throat> well yeah, man. I sat there. This was, I was, I did, not really, not really. I was watching this, this podcast with him on it. And I was just cleaning my house and shit. Just bullshit. And this dude, this dude said, he said, in 20 years, uh, the question was, they asked him a question. They said, in 20 years, where do you think we're going to be with this kind of shit? And he was like, shit, in 20 years, I think that we're already going to be basically able to have a conversation in our head. Somewhere around yeah. the line. Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking the telepathy almost, dude. That's it is, fucking, exactly. This is, this is no longer technology. When something becomes telepathy, it becomes evolution. That's this what is, it is, yeah. Yeah, that's so, exactly what it is. Yeah, so we spoke about this at the last gathering because it's absolutely fascinating, man. I think it's probably one of the biggest things that's happened in the last few decades. I watched the whole presentation on his Neuralink device and it's exactly like you say. So there'll be telepathy. There'll also be like 3D printing of ideas. You just have an idea and then you can 3D print it. But also on the plus side, um, they're able to, he's pretty confident they're going to be able to cure paralysis. They're going to be able to save your cognitive state of when of like your neurochemistry when you're happy and you'll be able to reactivate that state. So I think like a lot of things, it's not black and white and it's a double-edged sword. Um, I think how private are our thoughts going to be? Who's going to be masterminding all of this is a big question. Uh, but I do think it is evolution. And I think that we're going to have to navigate this kind of hy hybrid cyborg metamorphosis at some point. And it's really this interesting. Also, happening now. Think about this though. This is also going to cause a riff in the world probably, dude. <clears throat> many people are not going to fucking roll with that, dude. Many yeah. people are going to, to definitely push back yeah. from that when that's going on. And it's yeah. going to be, that may even come to a head, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like, I mean, these people don't even fucking talk, man. This is fucking crazy. I mean, I mean, dude, you're talking about the, the, the future. You're talking about 40 years, 60 years from now. We're getting into cyborg state where we're fucking removing body parts and now putting on other other body parts that are not even. I mean, we're already fucking doing that. Exactly. So I, I mean, dude, we're we're getting to a point where the the future is becoming apparent that it's obviously technology now. Whether or not in my lifetime, because I still have what another forty years, something like that, to live in my lifetime, whether or not it's crazy to think that we're gonna have to make that decision. 
on a lot on a lot of levels. Yeah, I never and that never engaged my. I, I never thought about that, and yeah. that never crossed my mind m- until maybe 2019, 2020. I guess yeah. those are the years where I started actually really thinking about, wow, where the fuck is technology going? It's going for well, fast. You, Lennon, Lennon, you said we're going to decision. What did you, what did you mean? You just said, uh, like, the, the decision, before you the said decision to, either, to either join with this, like, put this shit in your head, not just put things in your head, but also your organs, changing your organs. I'm talking about changing your human body as it, as it dysfunctions naturally. So well, did I you think that... Decision to have a cell phone or have a computer? Did you make a decision? I mean, obviously, I choose to, but I can honestly say that you can probably live a pretty sweet life without it. To be honest. No, but I'm saying like what I'm saying is for everybody, including myself, having a cell phone, upgrading a cell phone, having a laptop, having as the time goes on. Did I consciously make the decision, or did it just kind of happen? Did it just kind of like flow, kind of like? Like it just happened because I, I, I needed it, but I didn't say exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm making a decision. Exactly. Then that's, that's what's the most scary part is that this shit is going to happen whether or not we like it or not. We don't have a fucking choice in it. It's not, there's not going to be a choice. Like I was trying to say, it's not going to be a choice whenever I'm at a job and I'm competing with other men and other people and I'm sitting there and I'm fucking trying to figure Like I said, the architects, you know what I'm saying? Sitting at the table. You don't think that eventually they're going to be like, yo, dude, like our company is going to get fucking bought out in a month if we don't get our shit together. So I'm gonna get the Neuralink. And I think we all should, so we can fucking start winning. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. I mean, that's just what I think. That's what I think a lot of people are gonna do. That's gonna be the rationality behind it. Now, whether or not that's good for mankind in the, moral, in a, in the moral sense or spiritual sense, who fucking knows? But you gotta think. You guys gotta think that if they're gonna develop new technology and this t- new evolution of stuff, that they're gonna have big groups uh, of, of of professionals, like even child psychologists, even you know people that that go that 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 introduce it, that doctors they introduce it in a way that's actually they're prepared for to make it better. You gotta you gotta you gotta think about the next generation. You know you can't think about like a small group of. Uh, you know, people like running the world, you know, you got to think about if, if they're going to introduce things like say Mac and uh, I, I don't know, all the, all, all the, all the leaders come together, you know, and they make a, they make a decision not based on their own interests on their kids having the best future, but in, uh, uh, well, I don't mean their, their family's kids and all selfish like that. I mean like kids as in like the next, it, it, it's going to be really interesting. I mean, and people are going to separate, look at, look at the difference between cell phones. Like, you know, uh, like an older, older people, they, they've just got on the board. They're, 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 they're good now. They're better with zoom and stuff. But before if the, if this thing didn't slow down, like we did, it, it was just, it was, I mean, the gap was just going farther and further. And yeah, yeah. We're, we're probably going to get reach a new level or have new innovations, a new technology where the gap is going to get, you know, even cy- even different races, you know, even different cyborgs, humans type yes. of thing. So I know that's what you were looking at. So yeah, that's possible. However, if they can do it in waves and they can do it safely and structurally, uh, like 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 the, the transition could be so smooth, you don't really know what's going on, and you realize, like you said, like yours was capitalism. Ha- ha- I-, I have to do it in order for me to survive, you know, with this job. But uh, like I-, I don't know. I'm just saying that there's hope. Like imagine this stuff being introduced with child psychologists being the ones that are kind of leading the pack. Just, just to give you, just to give, like, hopefully, like wh- what I see it that is happening is, is I would like to see it more like that rather than, you know, uh, uh, the, the few leading, leading everything. They're, they're just like, like looking at their own interests and they're just looking at money, but they're like, like more from like the bottom, bottom up. But yeah, the technology is coming no matter what. No matter well, which we, how well, we respond. Well, the problem is too. I mean, you guys know like the Unabomber and shit like that. I mean, hopefully everyone here mm-hmm. knows like what his like little theology was. And um, I'm, I think that it's somewhat, in my opinion, somewhat fucking kind of correct, man. Check this out. Wait, if who? We all, if we all have chips in our brain, bro. If we all have chips in our brain, think about this, man. You don't think a computer can't be fucking hacked? You don't think that new, the government doesn't have the technology to hack your shit? Yeah, they would be able so, to. Yeah. So why, that's why I'm trying to tell you, mo- 50% of people probably are not stupid enough to put something in their brain that they know can be controlled or with have shit taken from yeah. easily. And uh, obviously our phones already are what the most personal thing we have. 
and governments have access to all that shit. Yeah. Dude, the only way you can not seriously uh, have like any any sense of real privacy in life, if I can be absolutely honest with you, is to burn a computer using PGP with tails on a fucking uh, a little uh, uh, USB drive, bro. That's about it, man. And you, you better be running. You do you, and you should be running that shit on a Mac, bro. Just take that. Mac so, Pro. You, yeah, buddy, you, guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. buddy, you got your hand up. Hey, buddy. What's good? Oh, yeah. You got your hand okay. up. Well, off topic. Yeah, off topic. I wanted to. I wanted to um, expand on perceptions towards COVID it, without spending too much time because I know you can run wild with COVID. Uh, it's it's probably the topic on the planet, as you know. Um, I I wanted to know just if anybody thinks that the perceptions towards COVID and the serious and the gravity of COVID. Can that be defined across party lines, party, political party lines? In other words, does anybody think that Republicans think have one perception about COVID and Democrats or independents have a different perception on COVID? That's what I wanted. To, that was my topic. Oh, shit. I think everybody's got a perception on COVID. Yeah. Everyone. And like but for the, me. But can, are they distinct? Devin, I hear that. I hear you, Devin. But can you draw it across party lines? Well, Republic, because every Republican I've talked to thinks one wants to to brush it off like it's not that serious, and everybody else, other party, thinks that it's very serious. I see the same way. It's like one, like people are like one way or the other, and for me and the people that I'm around most of the time, we're just like, I'm just like, you know, what's real is like what's in front of me, and I mean, I I do my best just to follow um, what I believe is my path. And in terms of the, the COVID, um, it, it really hasn't affected me uh, that much. And in terms of the party lines, I mean, uh, I'm, I, I, I honestly, I've seen, I see, bo- I see both extremes. I've seen extremes and it, had, it hasn't really affected me. I'm just letting you know, it hasn't really affected me and, 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 and my, my life, my spiritual, mental, physical. It hasn't affected me yet. Devin, that's a good thing. I'm not saying that is a good thing that it has not affected you and it hasn't disrupted your course of life. But a lot of people, it has. No. Uh, a lot of others, it has. Um, Josh, what do you have? You talked to people about. Uh, can you can can you see where I'm coming from across uh, uh, about party lines? I don't know who who. Yes. I don't know if you've. Yes, I can. I do know what you're talking about about how like one one side is talking about it differently than the other side. If that's what you're talking about. And uh, yeah, Republican. Oh, this is just a bad flu. A lot of Republicans don't think. I'm like, I think it's worse than the flu. If the whole globe is worn a ma- is walking around with a mask, isn't if everybody it in the globe is walking isn't around it, with a mask? Like it's like, isn't it kind of weird though? Like they're trying to recruit personality. Like they're like, oh, you're a safe person. You must be a Democrat. Oh, you're a fucking. You're a wild person who doesn't go fuck about a mask. What are you, some kind of Republican? That's the extreme. <laughs> yeah, it's more subtle than that. It's more subtle right. than that. This is what my perspective is, is that and this, I, I listen to mostly Republican stuff. Like I don't do it very often, but radio, there's a guy that I follow. I haven't heard from him since the vice president's election, but Basically, it's like the Republicans, um, they want Trump and they think that the vaccine is going to come and they're pro-business. And then the liberals, this is the way I see it, they're, they're, the way they, they tell me, the liberals are people that want to overthrow Trump, that want to take over the government, that are, that are Marxists, that want to have all, like, like um, uh, that, are, that are, in my, where I come from, I mean, it's like the, the, li- the liberals are like bad. And like the, the Republicans are like good, and, and and I see, and the Republicans are for for, for COVID. They're not they, they, the 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 liberals are a lot more strict. They want a lot more restrictions. I want that's just the way I see. I don't know. I don't know how it is with you. I don't know how I see it with you. But that's basically it's real simple, and, and I, I see the same pattern over and over. That's what I see versus Republican and Democrat. Democrat, liberal, liberal Marxist um, uh, want want to like have this world agenda 
and then Republican uh, pro-America, Republican business, Republican, let's close our borders and make America great again. That's, that's, that's what I see. I mean, that's my perception. And that, like I said, I don't really, it doesn't really bother me very much, but if you ask what, what are we, each, each other's perceptions, I mean, Landon gave his kind of extreme. So that basically everyone's got different, but there are, there are some, some, some similarities. So, so there has to be, there has to be some bond, bonds and, and agreements. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay, uh, you know, Landon, I, here, I think Landon's got a good point. Landon's got a good point, as does Devin. Um, but I think that the, the Democrats are more likely to try to say, oh, Republicans have screwed up this COVID. Let's see how bad it is. See how bad it is. You need to be out of power now. You, yes, you see how bad. And I, think, I think one party is, is trying to use this as leverage and, and uh, as a springboard. And, uh, what's the word? I'm, what's the term I'm looking for? An advantage. Use, using the, the COVID yeah. crisis as an advantage to get into power as opposed to the other one brushing it off. Well, yeah. isn't it about I think it's the, so much propaganda? Isn't it about the yeah, president? The, the, Democrats, like a lot of the Democrats want to take out the president. They they, they try they try everything they, they they're trying everything they can do, especially the the coronavirus. Well, you might be succeeding. It doesn't look good for him right now. You guys ready for another four you look more years? The poll, <laughs> you look at the polls. I'm not saying the polls. I'm not saying the polls are absolute truth. Because the polls said one thing four years ago, and reality was different four years ago. But it, it's not looking good with less than a month ago. I think there might be a, the COVID's definitely an advantage for one party as opposed to another. Oh, these these guys are definitely not going to have someone by November third. They're definitely. I mean, I don't. It's going to take. It's going to take so long for them to resolve. They're, they should change the whole system, man. They should change the whole. We don't know. We don't know how 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 how, how much this is going to unravel. I mean. I mean, for me, like when I saw the vice president, I'm like, oh, my God, like, like, and then I saw, and then they're postponing the next debate, like every day, <laughs> that, they've had, everything that they've had, like for, for since the beginning of our constitution is being tested, is being like, is being, and it's, it's become like a, a sports show now. It's become, it, 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 and, it, and it, it, and there, there's gotta be, um, I mean, this, I mean, that's what I'm, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I really don't think that we're going to have uh, an answer for our next president by November third. And this whole voting thing. And I mean, I don't even know what the next debate's going to look like. I mean, imagine how many people are going to watch based on what happened the first one. I mean, it's like oh, it's okay, not, sure. It's not, you just you just got to like. Devin, you have a question. Um. I, I was there a lot of mudslinging going on between Harris and Pence. I'm uh, as much as there was in the first debate between um, Biden and Trump. Mm -hmm. I missed it. Forgive me. I, I never saw the one between Harris and was it smooth? Was it professional or was it completely oh unprofessional? You didn't see the vice presidential election. I, I missed it. Debate? I missed it. Harris blew Pence out of the water. Literally blew. I mean, like literally, it was like it was embarrassing. I mean, I thought Pence could. I, I was, I thought I liked Pence like, like, uh, like up until the election. And I was like, I didn't know that he, I didn't know that he could happen. I didn't know that could happen. I really, I really did not know that could happen. It was just like. What, what, what issues was she beating him? Was he, she beating him up on, destroying him on? Every, every little thing. It, it was but, like the opposite of the presidential. Go ahead. But I heard um, Devin, I'm sorry. This is so fascinating. I heard that the Democratic party got the questions before the election so she was bringing up like abraham lincoln and stuff like yeah. that and she was like already ready for the republican party it's like they already had the upper hand and pence like didn't have any of the questions so what do you think about that but you're saying, but you're saying they cheated for you saying some one side cheated basically i mean would you be i mean that's that's the talk right now, and that's why I'm bringing it to the table. What do you guys think? What if the whole thing staged? Yeah, I what think no? the whole thing staged. Yeah, what both if, if wings Pence... are two wings on the same bird. No, what if what if each debate was staged? Like each party actually knew what they were, what the other person was doing, and their their whole goal was to help was to make the other person look that way because it really looked like Pence, like he looked like a different person than what I saw the last four years. Like we used to like watch him speak. I love how how elegant he was and how, but this. This one, it, it, you're right. It, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Kamala Harris, she knew. She was just like, like on top of every little thing. And then Pence was just kind of sitting there, like going, like, 
I, I don't know. It, you, you, I, I, I don't know, but it was entertaining. It, it was definitely, and it's definitely like you just, you just, you, where, where we're at, we, we don't know. And even people that are probably high, high up there, you know, they I guess know. We can, yeah, we can know that the flies support Pence, okay? Yeah. <laughs> the fly, head. we got the flies vote, okay? And that's all that matters. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, what? The flies? What's up with the flies thing? There's a fly. If you guys missed the pres, there's like this. Yeah. It's going yeah. off on the internet. Um, there's so many memes and stuff. There's this fly at the end of the um debate uh, that landed on a Pence head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think God met me in the form of a fly the other day in my studio. Yeah. I was like, wait, God is in this fly? Maybe. Yeah, there's like a Trump hat the on the Spirit. fly with like a flag. It's so funny. <laughs> Oh, I want to see that now. That's classic. Yeah, yeah it's going viral. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, I, I had no idea even about that debate. So I'm glad one of us is informed, Brie. You can oh, no, I, I didn't watch the whole thing. I skipped a lot. And then like the whole world, opinions. It's just me just going on the internet, just swiping through. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a huge turning point in human history. I've heard that um, it's one of the biggest elections ever and people are saying this is pivotal for the future of humanity. Do you guys think it's that big of a deal or not so much? No, I think it's overblown. I think, I think they blow it out of proportion. I think they sensationalized. Yeah. I think it's sensationalized. Okay. I think that's very much, I think that no matter who's in there, we're going to revert back to the means. The economy will revert to the means. The stock market will revert back to the means. It may take time. It may react, but, uh, but that reaction will be short-lived in the market. I think, I think it is the most important election in the world, not because of the personalities that are there, but because of the people that are following. I mean, I mean, they're, like talk about extreme followers. I mean, you know how they how different parts of the country, they just love Trump. And honestly, Kamala and for the Democratic liberal side, she was amazing. She, she was like, you could not have been any better, really. You really, and, and so people that are gonna want her, you know, to, I mean, and, and the, the guy, like she just kept in Joe this, Joe that. I mean, she just like was like a thousand times better than Joe Biden, a thousand times better. I mean, but it, I mean, I haven't watched any social media. I just, I watched it, I watched the thing and these are, these are my perceptions. But no, it is going to be the most historic uh, uh, election because where we're at as a society, not, not because of the actual people, but where we, where we are at and where we can go or can't go. And yeah, the, the personality of the president, I don't think, uh, I think is going to make a difference because the people are going to want to follow him. But once, but once that president is in power, like it's going to, things are going to, like things got to change. I mean, things are, things are going to change. Yeah. Once we get that president in power, I don't know how, how we're going to do it now. I don't know. Don't you guys kind of feel like it kind of feels like every time there's a vote in America, it kind of just feels like you don't really care about either one and they're both douchebags and you kind of <laughs> wish you an actual like good person to choose from. Dude, I, kind of I do feel like that. Of, like one douchebag or another douchebag instead of like a good guy and a bad guy. Yeah. And why are there only two options? Why is it only liberal uh, Republicans or Democrats? It's like either yeah. you're one of the boxes and they're all like this or they're all like that. You why don't we have like an alternative? Here, you got this fucking sellout here. Which one do you want? <laughs> sell out you want to sell out to, bro. <laughs> We have, we have, we, they have to do that because of the rel relativity rule, right? You, you have, you can know only, we can know one from the other. That's how you, that's how, that's how you, you know what you stand for. You know, you got to choose one of the, you got to choose one vote or the other. Don't one you think side. that's kind of like brainwashy though? Like, can't we like, just like do something? I feel like at this point, Democrats are fucked and I feel like Republicans are fucked. And the only way is to actually break loose from them. Yeah. Because their, their polarization of America yeah. is distorting actual America's unity. And Land I think they, until people yeah. are actually intelligent enough to see past uh, political parties and see that the government is the true enemy of the people and not the other way around. The people are made to defend the people from the government because the government is tyrannical. Now, so? until people realize that and get past political parties and actually start getting shit done, like protecting your own privacy because privacy is power, information is power. Until the people are intelligent enough to fight for that, this is just going to be a big rigaroo of uh, basically just fucking yourself over and over again. But you got to you got to respect protocol and tradition and constitution. 
the reason why there's the term Republican, the reason why the term America, I don't know, but down the past 150 years, it's something's happened, you know, that we can't just like erase. Uh, so like, I think you gotta, you gotta, I mean, our whole constitution, I don't know what's like, you know, the whole tape interpret like what is the foundation of our, of our country anymore? But we- It was no, supposed to be on the constitution. Okay. It was supposed yeah, to be on the constitution. But the constitution has already been broken over and over again. And when nothing <laughs> happens and you continue to break it, maybe the constitution is too weak. Maybe the people actually need to have a real rule of law. Or maybe, maybe it needs to come from a separatist movement. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? So is there anything we can do? Should, can we do something to yeah, make yes, the future better? Tell, teach There's us. There's absolutely something you can Landon do. Landon in Vietnam. So what you can do is you guys, which, here's what you can do. First, you can stop giving them your information. Second, you can then join groups of people who can communicate without okay, having their information taken from them. Then once you're smart enough to do that, you can start doing other things. There we go, triumphant that's, music. That's good. No, I, I like that, Get, <laughs> getting, getting involved with groups that, 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 you, that you drive with, that you believe in, and, and, and using your voice to communicate. Um, uh, I, I used to like, I remember in, in, in school, we learned that, you know, uh, the term idiot was someone that, that wasn't involved with, 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 with government issues. But now, like when the traditional person says, oh, you just got to vote. Honestly, now I'm like, I don't even know if that's going to matter. I mean, like I got the, the whole, where's my mail, my mail-in ballot just like sitting here. It's just like, am I even going to use this? Or I drop it off? Does it even matter? Yeah. Um, so I wonder the same thing. It, it's 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 what 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 can you do? You can like that Mazo argument, that Mazo uh, background. You can work in that that lower bottom or in yeah. develop internal self. And I, I mean, you know, like like the guy said last 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 meeting on September September fifth about finding your purpose. Uh, what is your purpose? You know, Barry's purpose was just to help somebody, one person. Yeah. You know, finding finding your purpose. And, and moving, you know, go. There's a time yeah, to stay up and there's a time yeah. to go. There's a time to get involved. You know, yeah. that involvement doesn't have to be, you know, going to the Democrat, uh, you know, like uh, you, you could go to the poll place. Like what they're doing is they're having people go to the poll place to watch. They, they're signing up to go there to watch, to make sure people's ballots are, are counted, to make sure they're not like thrown away or whatever. That's, that's a, a thing that I've heard several times. Uh, actually, I tried to do it, but they never returned my email. But yeah, you you can get involved. You can do you can do something. That thing. Find something to do. Believe that this is a this is a, this the country needs you. I mean, you're a citizen. You know, you got to. Well, you can get involved as long as there is a such thing as freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. When there is not a such thing as freedom of speech and freedom of privacy of speech, that is when a problem is 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 true. That is an actual breach of real freedom. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think that anybody who has complete and full access to that is in breach of, uh, of many, of human rights. It's, it's human rights. So, and I think that this also breaks down to the constitution. I mean, we, our forefathers put laws in place to prevent this from happening. Yeah. Yet it's yeah. still going on. It's still going on, whether we choose it or not, which is un not only is it unconstitutional, but it shows you that the constitution is weak and the constitution needs to be changed needs to be changed made stronger for the future of privacy and people and unity there's amendments right you can write amendments to the constitution don't and forget it. write an amendment dude why people don't you write one and then relevant, share it at the next gathering that people forget that relevance like actual relevance is where the people choose to put their their focus and that's why everyone's always focused on republican liberal this or that when uh, there's so many other things to be focused on and once you know what they fear most they fear that the people will one day see that they are not relevant. And the only thing that's relevant is what the people want. It is, yeah. There's a picture of um, democracy and there's a, like a leader standing on a plank and he's dangling off a cliff. And there's a whole crowd of people that's standing on the other side of the plank. And the only thing that's keeping him from falling off the cliff, cliff is the crowd of people. So really we're the ones, we're the people who make the leaders powerful. And so if people just, 
walked off. I mean, I don't want leaders to fall off the cliff, but it's metaphorical. So really it is the people and our consensus, which is going to um, decide the future. I think we need a platform that we can coordinate and be orchestrated and very intentional. And, uh, you know, yeah, writing an amendment to the constitution landed or something and then bringing it here and sharing it on Facebook and stuff. I think we can come together and make, and you said like maybe a separatist movement or something like that. I think that these are things that, can and have been done. Margaret Mead said, never think a small group of committed citizens can't change the world. Indeed, that's the only thing that ever has changed the world. So I think we can do it. And I think we'll wrap up here in the next few minutes, you guys. So if you, you've got f a concluding thoughts or things you want to leave us with, then, then let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Landon, go ahead. You got the stage, Landon. All right, yo, I'm just going to break it down like this, guys. Okay, here we go. Look, man, like I said, they're pretty much brainwashing you every day, making you believe that they're what's relevant. But the only thing that's relevant is you having the balls to take what you want. That's the only thing that's relevant. And I think that until people realize that intelligence through technology and communication, safe communication, that is the way to actual conquering of these problems that is the way because let me tell you something an enemy will never fear you unless he knows that you are capable of the same as him if they don't know this they will not fear you and at that point you are irrelevant yeah so what sergey is doing today you believe in that and you believe in the freedom of communication and platforms and stuff yeah. <laughs> got yes. the official thumbs up nice dude. nice absolutely what about the rest about of you guys what are your concluding thoughts how about this lando this is kind of from a spiritual uh perspective um with your enemy um when your enemy knows that you know that he knows that you have as much as <laughs> have in order to beat him, and that's that's when you lose, or that's when he loses. When, Bro, when, he, I'm so, <laughs> so when he knows that you know that you know that he when knows. He that knows you know. When your enemy knows, so you just you said it, but I was adding an extra dimension. When your enemy knows that you have um, as much power as him, then he's scared, right? Is that is that is no, that right? No. Okay. How about the thing. This? It's not How about, about being scared. They respect you. They respect you, but they don't respect okay. you. If, you, if they believe that you are not intelligent enough to protect yourself or to protect others, they will never respect you. Or what, or, and they won't wow. respect your message either. So you got it, you got it. That's, that's when they, they respect you. Why do you think they keep you... getting rid of, of any organization that becomes intelligent enough to basically uh, um, counter, or counter them? If you, if you become organized enough, as a people, they will stop you. They will put, that's called the FBI, the CIA, the NSA. Oh, Those are people goodness. who will stop other organizations and label you as a terrorist in order to stop your organization from coming together to actually make change in the world because they are what, pre they are what prevents the change and they want to control the information in order to continue to prevent their change and to continue the world with you people obsessed with politics that don't fucking matter while they continue to steal your rights. Yeah, but if you get to the point where they respect you, you're, you're, you, you get enough people, you get enough voice where they respect you, they're not gonna try to take you out. What they're they're you going think, to respect you. What do you think respect is? Respect is information. If I know everything about you, is that real respect? No, you need to show, no. the people need to show that if you can collect information on us, we can collect information on you and we will. There you go. You're putting out that message right now and, and all the FBI and CIA who are listening, uh, we appreciate your guys' <laughs> presence and uh, we got you. Uh, checks mailed to our address would help. They, they would really help. They would buy back some time. So we're mail working on that now, Joshua. Second round of stimulus packages. We're working on it now. I know that's what boosted the stock market on Friday, man. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't mind another $1,200. I hope you get one in Vietnam, Landon. I don't know how that works. 
Um, but you guys, I think we should wrap it up for the day. I think it's been really stimulating. And this time that we meet at the next gathering, which is November 28th, we will know the results of the election unless you guys say that they're not going to have the results by then or there's not going to be a party that does win. Um, so let me just share this little thing that shows us the date of the next one. Um, November 28th, you guys. And it's, Josh, it's all Josh, yeah. Josh you, should, you should do a poll. Uh, who who thinks that there's going to be a president uh, by on uh, November 28th, and, and then and then have the elect have the um, uh, results on uh, on uh, the next time we meet? I wonder if I could just type one in right now. I bet I could. You mean amongst us do a poll, or should I do it yeah. for the broader Facebook community? No, among, amongst oh, us. All of Facebook. Oh well, they can't. They don't. Oh, okay, let's try this. Um, results. We'll make it anonymous just because that's fun. Will there be a president by the next gathering? So you're saying like by November 28th? Yeah. Okay. Then by 11:28. Josh, why so long for the between gatherings? Well, there's not a full moon earlier than the 28th. There actually is, man. There's one on Halloween, but it's Halloween, and so oh. uh, yeah, I think we will acknowledge the light and the moon in the sky and the reflection of the luminosity. We will thank that light and then we'll gather together on, on the 28th. So I've launched that poll right there. See if you guys can answer it. I don't think people on Facebook can, but can you guys see that? No, you need a different poll. Different question. <laughs> what? All right, here we go. There you go. I'm out of here. Okay, and we got, we got three, two, one, boom. And poll share results. And we have 67% who think, yes, there will be a president by November 28th. And one person said, nah, nah, we're just going to be cruising on November 28th. So love the democratic nature of these conversations. Love all of your minds and your hearts in the international community. And thank you guys for being here. I thought it was a lot of fun. Much respect, you guys. Catch you next time, man. Eh? Bye, everybody. It was fucking cool, man. It was Bye. cool. Back coming next time, dude. All right, peace. Here's the little Aslan's video. Yo. Aslan's rainbow. Video. Inspiration for transformation. Transformation. Yo, was that a lion? <laughs>